Back then, when people would ask, what do you do for a living? They get a response like, I am a content creator. Back then, people did not know what that meant, content creator. You have to explain yourself, well, I create content for a platform such as YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. But within the last few years, content creation has boomed. I mean, it's a thriving business now. Being that it's 2024 and there's so many varieties of camera options for you to use to create your content. They have the galaxies, the iPhones. So in today's video, I'm going to dive into the world of vlogging cameras to answer the burning question. Is the Sony ZV-1 worth it for vloggers in 2024? Let's find out. So I currently have it on S-Log2, S-Gamut3 dot Cine. If you want to get into a little color grading, this camera has those features as well. I am outside and the sun is all the way over there. But if you see, if I move it around like here, this is currently S-Log3 at S-Gamut3 dot Cine. You also have the option of HLG3 709. This is something that I never used. Now, something that I did mess up on when I first started this video, it was not on standard picture profile. I actually had it on Intelligent Auto. So Intelligent Auto is in the name. It's auto. If you don't want to deal with any heavy color grading, you could just leave it on Intelligent Auto. Now, I do advise once you start color grading, it's not a lot of stuff that you can do because intelligent auto and all this is with the nd filter well not filter the internal nd option on now this is with your standard picture profile iso is auto so you can see it changed from 320 to 400 is changing and my aperture is not changing but let's say if i want to change the aperture oops wrong side so this is at a 1.8 on the standard picture profile shutter 1 over 50 1 150 however you say it <laughs> but and the iso at 125 as you can see i can see all the zebras back here so this is probably all blown out i'll see when i get it in davinci resolve so got it back on intelligent auto one other feature that i love that this camera has is the background blur the lower the aperture the more bokeh the more blurred is the more blurry the more blurred is your background the more blurred your background is it has that option which is called defocus background defocus this is with a clear no background blur on and this is with the blur on i'll check it out when i get it in the system but that's something else that this camera has. Okay, so how about stabilization on this camera? This is something that is very kind of kind of important, uh, kind of important for vloggers as you're walking. You know, so right now I don't have the steady shot on. So this is me walking without the steady shot. And this is me walking with the standard steady shot. And now this is with the active steady shot. One of the biggest complaints about this camera was the lens. It comes with a fixed lens. I think it's an equivalent of 24 to 70. Might be wrong, but I'll put it on the screen. As you can see, this is with the lens that's on the camera. Before I had a wide angle lens from Ulanzi as an attachment but I don't think it's that bad. I don't need all this back and stuff. And plus I have the switch pod that I could just bring it like that outside. The only thing is that you're gonna have your arm way more outside, but this is with the standard lens and the standard stabilization. But now let's say if you do want a wider background, this is the attachment that I'm talking to you about. This is with ultra wide lens, this is without. Stop recording real quick. And I put the active stabilization on the camera. So you can see the difference. You see it's cropped in, which doesn't really bother me because if I, again, if I have the switch pod, you still see the background. But if you need the wider on the active stabilization, just put the ultra wide and look at the difference there. 
The ZV-1's compact size and lightweight build makes it perfect for vlogging on the go, whether you're traveling or just shooting around town, or you're going to a place where you don't want to bring something like the FX30, which is compact for a cinema line, but pretty bulky, or something like the A7 IV, which is also bulky. If you don't want to be vlogging with something so big, you can always take the ZV-1. Look how small this is compared to the FX30. This is one of the pros about this camera, that it is easy to carry and will not weigh you down. Next up, the video quality. Even though this is a small camera, it does pack a punch. It records in 4K, which also includes the Sony Science Color. The Sony's Color Science. I said it backwards. With just using the intelligent auto option, your vlogs will look professional and polished. Even in challenging lighting conditions, you could have a really, really good look with this camera. Now, it has an internal microphone, really good internal microphone, and it comes with a furry dead cat that goes on top, similar to DJI mic. Goes here, I lost it. I never use it because I always used my microphone. So this is the Sony ZV-1's internal audio. One, two, three, one, two, three. So this is the Sony ZV-1's internal audio. One, two, three, one, two, three. One of the standout features of the ZV-1 is its advanced autofocus system, which uses real-time tracking to keep you in focus no matter where you move. This is a great feature for vloggers who wanna focus on their content and not on their camera settings. So is the ZV-1 worth it in 2024 and beyond? In my opinion, absolutely. If you're on a budget and you can't spend $2,000 on a camera just for vlogging, the ZV-1 for me is a great choice. Now this video is not sponsored. I just wanted to put this video together because I've had this camera for a very long time. I've never did a review on it. It was my first camera and I said, hey, it still films really good at 4K. While there may be new models of the ZV-1 out on the market, the ZV-1 continues to deliver exceptional performance in a compact package. Whether you're a seasoned vlogger or just starting out, this camera has everything for you to create high quality content. Now, some of the cons. I don't know why Sony did this. They put the tripod hole thread right where the battery door is at. So if I was to put this here, this doesn't open. Is that a deal breaker? Absolutely not. I use and I've always used the small rig cage. See all these quarter 20 threads right there. You just pop that in, grab your Allen key, tighten it up. Put it in whichever one of these holes right here. Off to the side. And there you have it. So what do you guys think about this camera? Leave it down in the comments. This camera Currently goes for by itself the body for $648 on Amazon and you could get a bundle for about $730 ish. I'll leave the link in the bottom. It is an affiliate link. So if you use that link, I will get a small commission that will come to my channel. I am monetized, but I don't get money like that <laughs> from YouTube. I think I got paid once $100 and that was like over a year and a half ago. I don't do this for the money, but if you want to help out, you could use this affiliate link or you could go ahead and buy me a beer. I got the link below. It'll help the channel. Records HD 60 frames per second and 4K 30 frames per second. You could get all the details in their page. It's not a in-depth, in-depth review it's just me saying you can still use this camera for about 630 bucks i will suggest to get extra batteries because these batteries are small and you will run through them never stop learning